Greetings everyone and welcome to this tutorial about sprite sheets in Affinity Photo. Now to give you a little heads up to this date, there is no real scripting support for Affinity Photo. There is a Photoshop plugin support, but not a Photoshop script support, which means if you would look up a Photoshop script for sprite sheets and would want to use it in Affinity Photo, it would not work. That means there is no one-click solution for creating sprite sheets out of your Affinity Photo layer stack yet. However, Affinity Photo supported macros a few versions ago and they can be used to automate some processes. They're not as powerful as scripting would be, but I created some automated processes with it, which we'll use today, and you can download them in the description below to very quickly create sprite sheets out of your layer stack in Affinity Photo. So at first we wanna open some document which contains a layer stack we wanna make a sprite sheet out of. And we'll start off with some pixel art and some one dimensional sprite sheets. And later on, we're going to cover some vector art with two dimensional sprite sheets, meaning having multiple rows of sprites. So starting at our raccoon here, you can see I have each individual animation tile here as a layer. And just a heads up guys, this file was created using the new stack feature under file here. And you can just add a bunch of images and Affinity will throw them into a layer stack and then you can export your sprite sheet with that. So what we're first going to do is we're pressing Control shift s and we're saving a different version of this file right now because you don't want to overwrite the document you're working with because during this process we'll also rasterize each layer so you're gonna probably lose some important layer information or layer effects or our vector data and therefore we'll save a different version of this file so raccoon writes probably so in this example, this current document size will be the size of one individual tile on our sprite sheet. So if for example, our pixel art here would touch the very edge of the document, we would probably wanna add some margin there. And we can do that by going to document, resize canvas, and you can just add with pressing plus in here, uh, a number of pixels you wanna have as margin. Maybe you have four pixels margin and then anchor to the center and resize. And then you have on each side, actually you will have two pixels margin on each side because two of those four are used for this side and two of those four are used for this side. And the same applies also to the top and bottom because I got the lock on, on with height proportion. So now we're going to prepare each individual tile. So each tile has the same bounding box as any other. For this, you're going to need your first macro. And in order to import the macro you just downloaded, in your library panel, you can press this hamburger menu, say import macros, and then this will pop up and you can just import the macro you just downloaded. Then you should have this sprite sheet section here with all the macros I have listed here as well. If you can't find your library or your macro window, you can find them under view, and then studio and there you have library and a little below here you have macro. So as I mentioned already, we're going to use the first macro here and I'll select my top layer, which is the last frame of my animation and press the tile bounding box macro. And what will happen there is you'll see we have this bounding box I mentioned around my top layer here. And you cannot do this for every tile. Uh, so uh, for example, I cannot shift select all of them and then press tile bonding box because this is just a limitation of macro. I have no kind of array operations available or anything. So you have to do this for each layer individually. But if you see the other two tile bonding box options here, uh, select below and select above. And if you press tile bonding box, select below, bam, it will group this layer and create this bonding box to it. So it has this perfect bounding box. And as you've probably seen, it selected the layer right below. So what I can do now is I just click, 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 click. Now all my layers have this bounding box. So if you do it the other way around, if you start at the bottom, you just use this tile bounding box select above. Next thing we're going to do is, is we're going to resize our document or our canvas in this case. So every sprite fits to the document. Every sprite has its own space there. And we're going to do this by document resize canvas. And because we have six layers, we have six frames, we want to have six times the size of our canvas. And because I want to have in this case a one dimensional sprite sheet, I will only adjust the width here. And this is why I will unlock this. And if I multiply my width by six, then the math expression will just fire and it will do the math for me. And then I press resize and then the document will be big enough so every frame has its own spot. 
So now we want to spread our sprites along the sheet. And for this, there's this tile line macro coming into play. So I'll just select the bottom layer, shift select the top layer, and then press tile line. However, there's something important to consider here. And this is sometimes affinity messes up the selection order in this case, because I pressed shift select. And if that happens to you as well, I hope that changes in the future. But in this case, for example, if I press the tile line, you can see my last frame here is actually my second frame, which I don't want. So if this happens to you, just control select every layer. So I select the first and then control select every other one and then press tile line and then the order will be correct. So there you go. This is our first sprite sheet. Once again, we saved a separate version for this because you don't want to mess up the, the file you're drawing with or you're doing your vectors with. So now we could export this and we're good. However, there are a few other macros we probably spotted here. So we're not done yet. We're also going to cover now two dimensional sprite sheets or sprite sheets with multiple rows. And therefore I prepared this vector graphic here, which is a sci-fi panel. And I want to have every shape in the sci-fi panel on one tile in the sprite sheet. But in this case, I want to have it two dimensional. So I have three, three, three sprites. In order to do this, we'll going to go with a little bit different approach here because this document here, if I select the hand here, you can see this is a 2K document. And in my opinion, this is already sufficient enough space uh, for the entire sprite sheet. So I'm not going to resize my document. I'm going to resize my sprites in this example instead. So the first thing we're going to do, as you probably guessed, is we're pressing Control Shift S and we'll save this with the sprite suffix here. So now, as I already said, we're going to resize each individual layer and not the document. There are two approaches here and one is using those scale tile bonding box macros. I'll just show off what this does. If you press one of them and press the scale tile bonding box, you can see it created this bounding box here and it also scaled the tile. So if I right click this and say edit macro, then I can use this, this, little, this little wheel here so I can adjust how it will scale. So in this case, you could also use some math expressions. For example, if you know it's going to be a third of the size, like it is in my case, you can press a hundred divided by three and then you have exactly a third. And now I can do the same thing for the second layer by pressing the play button here. It, it's now obviously smaller because we scaled this with 50%. So let's go back a little bit here and now press this for every individual tile. However, I will use this scale tile bounding box select below once again. So I'll also edit this macro, select this box here and enter 100 divided by three, two times. And then I press play, 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 until we're done. All right, I don't want to scale the background, so that's fine. However, there's another alternative solution for scaling this, which some of you maybe think is a little bit more attractive. For this, we will just select the very top layer again, use the tile bounding box, not the scale tile, and just select down every individual layer once again. And now as every layer has this bounding box, we're just going to select all of them. And in our transform panel, you'll probably find this in the bottom right of your window. Or if you don't find it at all, just go under view studio and open the transform panel. I'll have mine right here. And if you have all of the layers selected, then you'll see the current width and height. And you can modify this once again by using math. We want to have a third of our size, so we will use the 2048 divided by three. And if you want to escape here real quick, because we want to lock the aspect ratio here, so it will do the same for the height immediately. All right, and bam, basically the same thing happens. All right, so the next process is once again, layouting those things. I already have all of them selected. And in this case, I don't care about the order. So I'll just press the timeline button. And there we go. We have this tile line here now, of course, shooting above our document, but as we have multiple rows left, this information here will definitely not be lost. We will bring this down into here. And in order to do this, we have this tile line shift option here, or as some of you probably already guessed this, we can simply use the duplicate with transform method of affinity, which is by pressing control J. 
this will duplicate our layer here and we can move it down, snap it into the center. And if I press Ctrl J again, it will duplicate it and apply the same transform to the current layer. So in this example, it will move once more. And now I have all the tiles I had before on my document ready for export. However, the other solution for this is using this tile line shift macro. I'll again open my macro tab here and edit the tile line shift macro. And here you also have once again some options you have to adjust. In this case, the offset X always should be minus your document size. So in my case, minus 2048. And the offset Y should always be the, the dimension of your sprite. So in my case, it's a third. So it's 2048 divided by three once again. And then I can use this play button here to move this down and it basically produces exactly the same result. It's just some kind of preference which one you're going to choose. So, but as some of you, or maybe all of you probably realized, we have some junk here outside of our document. And as we can see it, maybe you want to clean it up. Maybe you just use this document for export and you don't care. But if you want to clean it up because you want to save a copy of this, you can do this also with two possible solutions. The first one is very easy. We just group all of our free tile lines by pressing Ctrl G. And then we're going to layer, rasterize and trim. And this will rasterize everything you can see on the document and throw away everything else. And the second solution to do this is by selecting all of those lines, which, which are essentially groups. And then we'll press Ctrl Shift G to ungroup all of them. And now we can use our move tool here to select all of those things which are not in our document and just delete them. Just in case if you want to keep a layer for each individual tile, this is definitely the solution to go. It takes a little bit longer. So if you want to have the fast solution, use the other one. All right, that's about it for sprite sheets in Affinity. I hope these tools will help you a lot by exporting some sprite sheets. At least they do for me. If you get used to them, I, I can almost promise you this this is definitely going to be a time saver for you. If you have any questions left or even suggestions for what to add to this Sprite Sheets macro collection, just let me know in the comments. For questions, I'll answer them as best as possible as I can. And for suggestions, tell them maybe they'll get added in the future would be a great thing. That is it for this tutorial. Until the next time, stay calm, have fun and goodbye.